uh, here. Ah. Good, uh, good evening and thank you to invite me. I am very honored to be here in Oxford. Uh, I, honestly, I say before, I was very surprised to receive this invitation because uh, when I started to work in fashion, but also to study fashion, was not so popular. So uh, today that there is this interesting from an important institution like uh, Oxford and all you, for me something super uh, new. Uh, because um, fashion at the initial, especially in Italy, where I started to study and also to work, was a very familiar business. Uh, not like today, fashion was completely different things, it was about uh, freedom to express yourself and that was uh, the approach that I had at the initial of my study and also my career. Also in my family, uh, that was very scary about uh, the idea that I would like to work in fashion because uh, they can imagine that in the future could become a big industrial like it is today. Um, I worked at the initial uh, with an important, important brand like Fendi, but um, at the initial was a very familiar company with uh, five uh, women that realized their dream, to realize their company, and um, I was very lucky because uh, they supported me a lot uh, and to believe in myself uh, and also to create uh, with my passion and my creativity uh, all my idea and it's uh, very rare to find an environment that supports creativity like uh, Fendi Sister. And there probably I understood also this important element that this sister would <laughs> because we worked very in team. It was a, a really beautiful experience uh, for me. I stayed there more than 10 year, 12 years, so it was a, a long uh, uh, time. And after I moved in Valentino, also Valentino is a big brand today, but at the time uh, there was Val Mr. Valentino, Mr. Fermetti, also in this case was a familiar brand. Um, there I, uh, I approached for the first time haute couture, because uh, Valentino is uh, one of the most famous haute couture brand in Italy. Uh, Fendi was very well known for accessories, uh, for food, or less uh, for couture. Couture is completely another word and to, to have uh, like a mentor like Mr. Valentino was for me really important. Uh, with the atelier inside uh, where you can create not only accessory but also uh, close with this relationship uh, with the atelier. With, uh, so, also, in this case, it was very important for me to understand how much is important to work in team with all uh, uh, the community that work in fashion. Because uh, now we have this idea that there is the designer and that's it. But uh, the company is, uh, a big compl is very big and there are many different uh, um, uh, rules inside the company and it's important to work all together. Um, I spent 17 years in Valentino, I was uh, long and I became there also creative director with Piet Paolo Piccioli and at the initial I was uh, really in depth to bring these roles because I never, I, one thing is work behind a designer, one thing is uh, to be in stage I was very shy, so for me it was a, a little bit a shock. Also because you had to explain your work also at the press. And it's, uh, it's not simple <laughs> because uh, creativity sometimes, the people that are creativity made that because they have an intuition, because they have a necessity to create something, but sometimes they don't have enough uh, or the right word to express why. So, um, also in this case, uh, for me, it was an important step uh, to understand more about uh, myself and my job. Um, the last uh, big step was to move in, uh, in Dior. 
When I moved in Dior, I was uh, a really adult because I, uh, I was uh, 52 years old. So, and I started in fashion when I was only 22. So I, I know very well how much this industry has changed in this time. I, uh, I understood also like clothes, uh, and not something superficial, like uh, in Italy at the mission when I started, uh, everybody around me believed that it was sound only about uh, mm, mm, desire, but uh, something that was not serious. I, I, now I know how much uh, clothes speak about ourselves, about uh, our culture, our background, uh, our, um, our body and is in dialogue with our body. So to make fashion is something serious. Uh, also that uh, is not so obvious probably for, the, for many people. And uh, when you are to create and to dialogue with the body and with different body, you understand also how much is important to, to be um, really creative, but at the same time, so, to express the difference that they are inside each person and in the world. Uh, when I arrived in Dior, I, I, I was proud because uh, I know how much is important the Dior house in the world, but at the same time, uh, in my mind, uh, uh, there was this important silhouette that represents the brand Dior. Um, I didn't want, and immediately I decided that uh, fashion could, and Dior especially, could be a big platform to speak about uh, this argument. Because now fashion is also about communication uh, and also storytelling. What kind of storytelling do you want to, to use for describe your job? Uh, the first uh, thing was to contact uh, Chimamanda, that is in, and at the initial she didn't want to come to, to the show and she didn't want to, uh, in some way, to, uh, to interact with the house. So I asked my son, my daughter, because she speaks and writes much better than me English, please, <laughs> you have to write a letter to explain why I want to have her here in Dior for my first show and why I want to, to use her title for a t-shirt. And uh, when she, wrote, uh, um, she read the letter, and she accepted. I was super happy I met her because uh, um, my idea was uh, to, to, because I know that Mr. Dior did this, this silhouette in 47, well, but it was another moment. He would like to give uh, an optimistic idea to the women that went outside the Second War. So they, all the women was very skinny, and so with this volume, with this silhouette, uh, in some way he, want, he wanted to give them hope for the future. But we are living in another time, and uh, so I want to move uh, Dior for the future, for a new generation. So immediately I started to work at the collection, but also in the communication, to express like uh, the women are faceted and uh, we want to be um, as expressed with the collection but also with the house uh, different uh, kind of uh, femininity that this silhouette don't represent uh, the women. That was uh, the first point. Not easy to express but uh, with the collection I, I try to make a different look that move also the ore in some territory that are like the sportswear, like the, the denim pants, like, because uh, the idea of the ore was very classic uh, and in some way the silhouette uh, speak only about one silhouette of body. I want to say that uh, with, uh, and I ask it also at the other artists that support me in uh, this new vision. Uh, the first thing was to call women photographers, not only because I want to support uh, women photographers, but because uh, I think image is very important in our work. Uh, so, and I think the women look at the other women in a different way. So uh, my idea was to promote a female gaze. I think that they don't try to objectify women, but to be subject in their picture. 
So I started only to shoot with women. Also that at the beginning they say to me that there was no many women photographers, but I demonstrate that it's not true. Um, another important element for me was to work with women artists, especially women that uh, are part of the second wave of feminism, because all they work is concentrate on the relationship with the body of the women and uh, the clothes, but also the architectural, everything is about the body. I think this element is central in my work, uh, in fashion work, but I need to have uh, other women to work with me in a community in some way. And this is what I do every day, uh, and I try to make my best, but uh, I never finish to learn about it, because uh, um, I didn't receive this kind of education. Uh, when I went to school, uh, they teach to me to make a beautiful sketch, to realize a, a beautiful clothes, but that's it. They didn't um, explain me, they didn't give me a book uh, to understand more about what there is behind that. Um, only after, and I have to thank you many people, uh, Robin Morgan, an important writer, uh, that helped me and also book helped me to understand more. Also because we are not to forget uh, that when we started to work in fashion, to study in fashion, it was not so easy to find a book on the argument, especially in a country like Italy and uh, without the media that we have today. Uh, this kind of book are all in English, only now are they are translated also in Italian and you can find more easily in the, in the internet uh, very soon. So I, in some way, I'm, I don't know in English, autodidacta, <laughs> and, but I really studied a lot to understand more and more about what there is behind the craftsmanship, behind the tradition of textile, because um, and it was very useful for me also that I love history. Uh, in any case, um, if you look at our clothes, about the history of clothes, in some way you understand more about the history of humanity. Well, the first uh, thing that uh, Penelope did was a toile. So speak really about uh, ourselves, uh, the embroidery, the craft machine, especially um, for women. Uh, all this work in the past uh, was not celebrated like artwork because it was done at home, it was done for, uh, uh, more for uh, domestic use. So um, probably not so much appreciate. Uh, I think that uh, we have to revalutate this kind of uh, art, especially in embroidery and textile, because I really believe that are piece of art. But also in this, uh, the idea of art that I, ha I received in, the, in my education was only close with uh, Caravaggio, Raffaello, Italian artists. Uh, in my book, there was no women inside. So it was very difficult also to find some reference. I'm very happy that now the things are changing, not so fast, <laughs> but are changing. Uh, and I think fashion has a big potential because it's uh, really something also that has a language very pop and so can arrive everywhere um, and uh, can help uh, to give a voice also at other uh, artists, and it's for that that I collaborate with different artists that, that can express their point of view about uh, the femininity um, and in general for all the arguments that are in really close uh, with what is important for, for me and for, I hope, also for the next generation. I hope it's enough, and if you want to make some question, I am here for uh, answer to you. Uh, so 
I think now we'll be having um, a period of kind of moderated interviews. So if you can ah, sit down okay. here. Um, and then we'll open this floor to the, some audience questions in the last kind of section. So thank you, Maria Grazia, for what was a really interesting talk. And I mean, it was so cool to hear about kind of how you've charted your career and are also kind of using fashion and art to advance feminist claims. Thank you. Um, so I was wondering, you are an Italian fashion designer um, with experience at designing at leading Italian brands and are now at the creative helm of one of the world's most historic Parisian haute couture um, houses. So what do you think are the main kind of similarities and differences between um, working for the Italian and the French fashion scenes, both two bastions of the couture world but different in their own ways? The two systems are very different, but also um, because uh, they have a different history. Um, fashion in French born with haute couture. So uh, they are very close with this idea of atelier, the patronage. Italy, fashion in Italy born and became strong um, around the 70s and uh, is more closer with this idea of uh, creativity, but also industrial designer. It's completely a different approach and close with Pret-a-Porter. Um, the, the two systems are different. Uh, and I was also, and I understood when I went to Paris, because also that before I did a lot of, uh, I spent a lot of time in Paris because uh, with Valentino our show was in Paris. Uh, so. Normally, I was in Paris very often. The two systems and the, the company inside are really different process. Um, Italian is more creativity and industrial. Fashion uh, in Paris is more this idea of atelier, one of a kind. There. Uh, but I think that what I try to do is to use the best of the two systems because that helped a lot. Absolutely, right. Um, so we're, for example, in kind of Britain, Oxford at the moment. Has London or the UK and its traditions kind of influenced you in any way? Um, oh yes, London was the first place where I went when I was young <laughs> because uh, uh, fashion in London uh, is so present. It was uh, like uh, uh, our dream. Uh, I remember the first trip that I did when I was a student to Olympia to see John Galliano show without ticket also. And I found a way to go inside with my friend. Uh, Carnaby Street, the King's Road. I remember very well punk. Everything was super exciting for us. It was uh, um, the, the country where you can find creativity, uh, uh, and very open mind, more multicultural. You had to, for, for everybody, that, for you is normal, but uh, if you come from Roma, where is a really uh, Italian city, but also at the time was very con Catholic uh, with the Pope, to come to Londra, to London was <laughs> completely another dimension. Wow, I see. So kind of riffing off that theme of like, you know, your student life, like the punk element and everything. Um, you know, quite a lot of us gathered here today are students. Could you tell us more about your like childhood or times as a student? Um, yeah. When I was a student? Yeah, and how that kind of, if that's fed into <laughs> how you see things that now. I remember that I arrived in, uh, in London, that we was very, very young, <laughs> with the denim pants and shirt, and we come back completely black, dressed, and at the airport, our family didn't recognize me and my, uh, and my friend Francesca, and uh, she, they look around because uh, we arrived in London and we immediately we change ourselves. Uh, we went to the flea market to buy uh, all the things uh, because London is the place where, in some way, in our mind, born fashion uh, idea new for Italian people. So uh, I remember Fiorucci, that was an important brand that born in seventy in Milano with the first tour, but uh, he used to come to London to find the new uh, idea that could be happen after and uh, also involved in Italy too. So 
uh, the idea to, come, to, to visit London and to went to London and to see the store, to see like the people dress themselves, uh, you know, was the only one that was very cosmop cosmopolitan city uh, in Europe uh, for our gen for my generation. So, and also the designer, you are not, we are speaking about John Galliano, but uh, there was also Mary Quent. All these designers are in our mind. Uh, also because there is completely a different tradition in England. Uh, in England, fashion and the tradition with um, also taxi style, born before that in the other country, with the Industrial Revolution. So um, it's more present uh, also in the museum, the exhibition. Uh, before there was not this kind of exhibition in uh, the other country. I see, how interesting. And also, did you just like, could you tell us, did you have like a favorite kind of item or a particular kind of you know, piece of clothing leather or jacket. accessory? The jacket, I see. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the leather jacket was uh, the dream of all. Uh, all uh, the young uh, people, uh, I remember very well uh, the first leather jacket I bought in London black, of course. All my friends too, they come with me. We, we was uh, really obsessed with the boots, the military boots black. The, the time, the punk time was had a big influence uh, also in my generation. And how do you see that, for example, you've been revamping, for example, the Dior um, traditional jackets and so on, um, and like the bar jacket, for instance, and how do you see kind of the jacket as an expression of kind of, you know, the balance between femininity and, um, you know, feminist or kind of, you know, advancing these claims? Of these I as well. think what that does it mean to wear a jacket? It's super complicated, but I, I think that the important thing is the women cho choose themselves what they want. I, I think that we had to explain very well that we propose some option, but uh, we want to propose a different femininity. This is the key, because uh, is there, are, there is no one fit of jacket in Dior. Now we have a different shape of jacket. You can decide that you can choose uh, a box jacket or a slim jacket, but there are different shapes and this depends about uh, what you want uh, and what you desire and in the moment. Also for myself, I didn't use all the time the same clothes. Um, I think the most important thing is uh, not to give one stereotype idea to be beauty or to be feminine or to be elegant, but uh, a multitude, in, multitude in a, a multitude of, of opportunity. Oh, interesting, right, I see. And kind of linking that as well, um, we were really intrigued to kind of hear about all your innovative works um, for bags and so on too. So you developed the baguette bag and also you brought back the dual saddle bag, you know, which is beautiful in terms of design and it's like my dream to someday to own one. It's so gorgeous. Um, it's like in the shape of a saddle and they have a little buckle, um, mm -hmm. like D-shaped buckle, so it's beautiful. Um, but thinking about it, like it, from like a kind of, you know, um, it's a beautiful, beautiful bag, but like, in, because of its shape, it can sometimes be difficult to fit like a little kind of notebook or a novel mm. or something inside. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's functional. Yeah. No, no, it's you know, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Um, but like, for you know, students like us at Oxford, we love reading. We love taking out like a book or something to just kind of make notes or be inspired. Um, you do make like tote bags at Dior, which are wonderful as well, like the Lady Dior bag, for example, um, and the D Light bag. But would you ever think about making like a bag which kind of caters to that sort of element too, like a um, leather bag? With yes, yeah. the first be, but because it, nobody knows, but also the bags has an important history. Lady Dior was done to uh, Mr. Ferré. Uh, a cellar bag was done from Galliano. I rework on it. The bag that I did when I arrived in Dior was the book bag. Be why? Because uh, my, op my obsession was to create a, a bag where I can put a lot of book, because I go all the time with a lot of book in my bags. Um, at this, and another bag that is um, the camp, 
that is green, is a, a bag where you can put book inside, but it's in textile, not in leather. Um, I, I think also the bag, in some way, like the clothes, represent also a specific time. Um, when Ferré did uh, Lady Dior, was a more formal time. I think when uh, John Galliano did um, sell a bag, was another time. So I, I think accessory like clothes, uh, uh, speak about also the time where the, the, they was created. Absolutely, how interesting, right. Um, so yes, kind of pivoting from that theme of accessories to some of the things you discussed in your talk about social issues and fashion expressing times and so on. Um, so the luxury industry is commonly associated, you know, with questions of exclusivity and privilege. Amidst this, um, what do you think are the social imperatives which the industry should consider? Um, and could you tell us a bit more about how you're advancing these aims in practice? Um, I remember hearing that you have a passion for embroidery, for instance, and you're supporting um, an embroidery school in Mumbai and that sort of thing. What is the importance on a more macroscopic kind of industry scale to push to these? <laughs> Fashion is a territory really uh, complex. Um, we receive a lot of uh, attack at our system, and um, I think some was good also to receive that because uh, in any case you have to think that we have to realize that fashion, the idea of fashion that we have today, is uh, uh, an idea of luxury, but also because. Uh, um, with that is, is because the idea is that fashion has to be democratic. Um, but we have to be also honest with ourselves. Um, if we are luxury brands, means also uh, that we have uh, we control everything what that we do in uh, the very good way. We buy the textile from a company. Uh, that are really control uh, every single uh, moment of the supply chain. And all this has a big cost. And you have in the price of the object at the end. Um, if, if you think that fashion is a creativity and you can appreciate, but it's not necessary that you consume, you can, you can understand also why there are this kind of a price. I can really enjoy looking a beautiful uh, painter, but probably I can buy it from my home. There is this idea that in any case, uh, fashion, everybody can consume at the same way, but it's not realistic. And it's for that that after born a lot of the fast fashion brand that are completely different from luxury brand. Um, where we produce? We produce all in uh, French or in Italy, uh, in our factory, when uh, the people have uh, the right salary. All these are really a cost. <laughs> uh, there are no other way to produce this kind of quality. Um, I support a lot uh, also the best quality around the world. It's for that that I support the school uh, in uh, India because I started to work with them uh, when I was super young, but probably nobody knew. But in India, all the embroidery are men um, inside the company. There are no women. So, but also in India, now, and this company is a super serious company, uh, where the people have really a long uh, uh, expertise, uh, really important expertise. At uh, one point, also in India, it was difficult to find someone that want to approach a new generation that want to learn this artwork. Because the idea is that you can do this uh, in one second, but it's not true. It's necessary, I don't know, apprendistato? Um, apprenticeship inside the atelier uh, before that you became uh, uh, really embroidery uh, good. Uh, and the, the young generation also in India prefer, like in Italy, 
because that's the, the same thing happen, happen also in Italy, they prefer to do other job, like call center or internet, this kind of job. So um, we spoke together and we say, oh, we have to create a school for a new generation. And we decide to make for women because there are no women. And that is helpful also for them to empower themselves to have a salary, uh, um, insurance, uh, healthy insurance. Uh, um, and so it's a very important project for me and they are super happy because before they can use their skill only for their personal thing at home. Now with this they can have a career, uh, they can have a job, they can have a salary. So the, is very com the, the complexity of version sometimes is not so evident also uh, for environment because uh, we are to think also at the social impact. We are uh, think about the environment, but at the same time also the social impact. Absolutely, thank you, that's interesting. Um, and also kind of thinking about what you just said now about, I suppose, linking together new generations, empowering um, you know, new generations of women to kind of be engaged in activities and so on. Um, we understand as well as your, the school, the factory you're supporting as well, um, you also support a, a number of women artists, you talked about your collaborations with photographers and you've also curated the works of um, second wave feminist kind of artists, so like Judy Chicago or Tommaso Binger and so on, um, that they're featured on the Dior social networks and on the YouTube channel and so on too. Um, amidst this, how do you see like the role of fashion and of creativity in creating links between different generations of women? You mentioned earlier that women have different experiences across different generations, but how do you see the importance of kind of fashion and uniting all of these together in creating these conversations? I think all the people that are creativity, uh, that use, cre that are creative, they want to create uh, the world that they would like to live. So I think also fashion can help uh, uh, to create, uh, and also creativity, a world where we are, we, we can live all together much better than today. Uh, and fashion can contribute, because in any case, uh, our um, system at the initial, our, our industrial, was very close. Uh, now, also because uh, we received all these critics, and also because probably the time are more mature, we started to reflect more about uh, many different elements that I think, and it was the young generation that helped us. Um, I understood many things because my daughter, my son criticized me every day. <laughs> and, and they criticized fashion too. That, that helped me to understand more about uh, this industry. And at one point, uh, I remember very well, I said, okay, stop to criticize. Can you help me to change something? Because uh, honestly, in the other side, what we realistic we can do together? Um, there are no other solution. And uh, I think this new generation that work with me, but not only my daughter, or my studio, helped me and also the system to evolve in a way that is more um, conscious about the criticism uh, and that is the important thing at the hand. Right, thank you. So I suppose kind of linking that as well to some of your upcoming kind of collections and so on. Um, on June the 16th, like later this month, um, Dior is unveiling its cruise collection in Seville. Um, could you tell us a bit more about this and are you, how are you kind of linking these ideas to these pieces which you're going to be exhibiting and bringing into yeah. mm. the world. When I arrived in Dior, they used to go for cruise in another country to realize a show. I never did before Dior in the other brand. So the first idea was, okay, if we are going the other country, we have to give back them more. Like we can give them more. We can collaborate, we can uh, um, promote, uh, we can uh, um, also give them a big platform 
to um, show their craftsmanship, uh, their beauty, their artist. Uh, uh, that's what for me was the goal, to create an event that is not a fashion show only the old, but is really a community fashion show where all the people of the other country work with us and, and also give them a different point of view about their tradition. Because sometimes, uh, I saw also when I did the show in Italy, in South Italy, the people don't realize that something is exceptional only because for them is usual. If I write someone that look at this tradition with different point of view, they appreciate more. And they and can give them also a different point of view, like to use these skills. That's the idea. So also in Spain, I went around the country, and in Spain there are a lot of different uh, beautiful uh, tradition uh, that come from uh, the different uh, part of the world, uh, from North Africa, from leather, or oh, oh, example, the embroidery that they did for, for a long time, especially for, uh, for the church, because they had this kind of a tradition. Um, and uh, we went around the country to discover this atelier where they never had uh, contact with the big brand and uh, we worked together for the show and uh, we want to promote uh, with uh, our prog communication program uh, them and their artistic vision. Um, there are two elements in Spain that touched me a lot. One is the show of Manila, that everybody believes that is uh, Spanish, but this scarves come from Philippines, was embroidery in China and also in South America and became famous in Spain. So now we think that this kind of uh, show is Spanish, but it's not true. Uh, and the same the fun. Uh, so it means that the, the object uh, can tell us a lot about the history of the humanity. And like uh, it's also difficult, uh, sometimes uh, this idea that we have about what is traditional. <laughs> but, um, well, it's, n it's not true, it's part uh, of a long trip that the object did. How fascinating, thank you so much. And kind of riffing on that as well, one of my favourite kind of cruise collections is the one you did quite recently in Greece as well. Um, and you, it, like the, it accentuated the savoir faire of Greek artisans as well as kind of, you know, kind of breathing in that contemporary energy too. Um, and some of your designs were very kind of like reminiscent of kind of Greek mythology, like the figure of Diana on the moon and that sort of thing. Um, and what role does I suppose kind of myth and history and local history you have to play in your aesthetics, in your work? Greece was very difficult to collection because uh, for we, um, like Italian, I receive uh, education and the reference that are really Greek, also about beauty, all the statue, all the, our reference of the beauty come from Greek. So it was also uh, um, difficult for me to, to find a way that could be, um, because it's very West culture, really super West culture. I didn't want to stay in this territory and to promote again this idea so close uh, with the past. And that was uh, very helpful for me, mythology, because mythology uh, and very, often we don't speak enough about the mythology with a point of view that is feminist <laughs> as a big figure of women that are not celebrated like men. <laughs> Everybody celebrates Homero, Les, uh, Penelope, uh, this idea of a woman, but she was strong. She resisted. Uh, she decided for herself at the end. So uh, the problem is all the time about the storytelling uh, like you use uh, and you read and you reinterpret and you tell about the argument. Yes. 
No, wonderful, thank you. Like one of my favourite dresses by yours in the um, the Dior Gallery in Paris is the one with the um, like a there's like a like a silver kind of circle in the stomach area, and it just reminded me a lot of um, like Diana in Greek mythology, you know, and that kind of the lunar kind of form. Yes, so. this is about lunar lunar. Mona is a, a women reference. Mm -hmm. It's a very important, strong reference for women. That's yes, brilliant. Um, and actually kind of linking, you mentioned statues and kind of how that's inspired you and so on, but recently you've also kind of collaborated, I think, with ballet and dance, um, the new Romain, I believe. Um, so how do you see kind of different forms of art speaking with fashion and how do you design, could you tell us more about designing costumes and so on for a ballet and... Ballet, I like to work with ballet, but in general with sport, because there the, the clothes have to be functional and help you to perform. So it's uh, really interesting for me to work, for example, with Sharon Eyal, because, uh, and it was very emotional too, because uh, you had to mix two language, uh, a fashion language, but also performing language. I, and I like the idea that the body can move uh, very easy with beautiful clothes. What I did and what I work every day in Dior is to create something that is light, that you can have every day on your body and you can move, because this is an important uh, aspect uh, in my job. Yeah, absolutely, kind of balancing that practicality with the, the creativity. Oh, wonderful. Well, before we open up the floor to audience questions, um, this is usually like a question we ask every single one of our speakers. Um, do you have any kind of general remarks, advice? What, if you could give one piece of advice to, um, I suppose, kind of future generations, students at Oxford, people in the chamber at the moment, what would it be? Oh, it's so difficult, this question. I don't, I don't think that it's possible to give advice. The only thing is possible to say that if you do something that you feel uh, is in your heart or with passion, is, is okay. I think that we have to... Uh, also that everybody say that is not a, right for you, but if you feel that it's good for you, I think it's never a bad choice. You have to cho choose in your career, in your study, what you really love. Uh, at the end, you are happy, I am sure. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Maria Thank Ratti. You. It was Thank a real honour. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, please join. <laughs>the sites are really small, <laughs> but uh, we develop all the sites. Uh, it depends about uh, the clients that we have in the store, but uh, also this idea to create, uh, uh, for example, I never made a collection in the, sh in the show with different body because it's not believable for our industry, but I want to explain why. Um, if uh, I have to make a pret-a-porter, in any case, before to make, also for shoes, uh, 41, I have to realize a prototype uh, that is 37. Like in the church, we, we work in the, in the prototype and after we develop the different sites. Uh, we are doing, uh, for example, this season, seven collection. That's mean one month and a half for each collection. We don't have time to develop for the show 
all the different sites and to choose, uh, for example, in a street casting, uh, the model. It's not realistic, it's not possible. Uh, in the other case, uh, I have to select the girls before and to make uh, one of a kind clothes, but this is not true. In any case, when I have to go in production, I have to realize 36, seven, and after, in Italian I say sorry, and after develop all, because we are industrial. Um, I know that is a, a big problem, but uh, I think also that we have to explain very well that the model on the, on the runway is not, a, non è una modella intesa come riferimento. It's not meant to be the point of reference is only a girls that are working and show a dress. I never use in my show, for example, also celebrity, because I want the people look the dress, only the dress, not the model. You have to imagine yourself in the dress. Um, yes, the member in the leather jacket. So you've talked a bit about how the fashion industry has changed during your career. What do you think the impact of social media has been on the industry as a whole and how do you think that'll continue to change fashion? Allora, come pensi che i social media hanno avuto un impatto sulla moda e come pensi che continueranno a cambiare l'industria della moda? The impact of the social media on media on fashion was um, not big, more than big because the risk is uh, uh, that you think the clothes are uh, a picture and also because uh, the idea is uh, that you have to create something that work in picture, no? on the real life or the real women. I honestly, personally, I don't take care so much about that and I prefer to use uh, the social media to, especially in Dior, to explain what there is behind fashion all the work that there is uh, of the people, the artisan, the art, the process. Uh, I think uh, social media you, is depend like you use it. I decide to, to use to show what there is behind clothes, behind our work, less uh, to show only um, visible uh, dress with a strong color, um, because I think this is, is another game. Um, the member in the beige? Thank you very much. Uh, when I think about, about your work, I also think about uh, uh, Francesca Zozzani, mm. a strong Italian woman doing amazing things, pushing boundaries. And I was wondering if you could give any advice to a girl or woman that wants to develop her sense of strength. For uh, Her sense of strength, so her personal strength. It's not easy. You have to believe in yourself. I remember when I arrived in Dior, everybody, the first thing that everywhere was wrote is that the first women in a so important house, there was everybody surprised. I started to work when I was 20 years old, 22. So with a long career before, nobody spoke about uh, my background, uh, but only uh, the fact of that I was a woman. I think it's uh, not um, relevant. So that uh, gave me uh, a big surprise. Uh, and at the same time, I realized also uh, that I have to be concentrate only on my job. I think at the end this is the only way to, to be concentrate on what you love and what you do. That's it. <laughs> and Franca, I, I went also in London with Franca, with a, that she supported me for a charity. She was the same. She never, she was concentrate on her work. <laughs> um, yeah, the member in, I think, the blue cardigan, the second row. Thank you so much for speaking today. I was just wondering, um, what has been like the biggest challenge in your career and how did you overcome that? Qual è stata la difficoltà più grande nella tua carriera e come l'hai superata? Oh, the most difficult in my career was to believe in myself uh, because uh, at the end this is the, uh, is something that you learn with, with time. At the initial you are insecure, you are young, uh, uh, 
Also because my family all the time pressed me that it was not a good idea to work in fashion, so <laughs> they don't give me <laughs> probably enough um, uh, security, encouragement. encouragement. Uh, but step by step, uh, without pressure, but only to see that one step and you see that the people start to recognize that you can do something. And also because uh, um, love uh, for what they, you do helps a lot. Uh, you don't think uh, of the other, other aspect. Uh, and also because the other people that you met uh, normally don't encourage yourself. Uh, <laughs> they want to put in Christ. Also, especially when you are young and you are creative. Uh, so, the, the, I think that was the most uh, difficult thing. But uh, now, I think I am 58, so probably enough uh, secure about myself. <laughs> um, the member in the, like, the white shirt, Thank you. So you talked about the relationship between the body and sort of creating clothes to sort of fit the self. Do you think as the first sort of female creator director, as a woman creating clothes for women, you have an advantage over sort of your male colleagues in being able to sort of imagine yourself in the clothes, whereas they're obviously creating clothes that they themselves probably never wear? Se c'ho un vantaggio perché sono una donna nel creare per le donne. Um, I don't think that uh, femininity is closer with the... Um, che la femminità non è, non è legata alla sessualità. Um, I don't so femininity is not directly linked with gender with or gender. sexuality? I, I think femininity means to take care. I think a designer that has this kind of approach uh, that wants to take care of the other can reflect about this. It's not important what gender is it. In my point of view, before there was an approach in the, in general, in the designer, that was more too much narcissistic. Not to think about that they have to take care of someone, to create something that you want to, that the other use and to feel confidence. But it's more about uh, sensibility, um, we are not to forget, now is another moment, uh, but I lived in 80, and uh, when the designer was like pop star. Uh, so that's, uh, and we live, we live also today, but probably uh, was before also worst, uh, very narcissistic time. Um, so it's more about the approach, not about, uh, uh, gender. Um, should we have like one last question before we wrap up? Um, maybe the member in the black? Yep. Thank you very much for your speech today. Uh, what would you say is your proudest moment in your career until now? Thank you very much. Oh, I am proud that I can work uh, in a way that is uh, really close uh, with my value, that you all support me a lot, because uh, we have to uh, be, I want to be honest, uh, uh, they never stop me in this project community supporting uh, women. Are, and this is, for me, is uh, super exciting, uh, and what I love more. Um, I'm proud, uh, that I can do it. <laughs> um, yes, so I think, thank you very thank much, Maria Gracia. Thank, thank you very you much. Thank you, everybody. Much.